So good morning everybody or whenever you're listening to this. Um, it's good to be with you again. Uh, hopefully we are also having a church picnic on Sunday morning and hopefully we will be less soaked than we were last week. All good fun though. Um, so this week I have been reading through some of the Psalms and they are so down to earth and speak of any and every human condition. Um, I read through them and I see and I understand where the writer's coming from. I think, oh yeah, that's that's so me at the moment or whatever. Um, and it's how some of the things I have experienced, some of the things I'm experiencing at the moment, they're all there. Um, human nature doesn't change over the years. There's um, in the Psalms and in our lives, there's sadness, there's betrayal, there's grief. And they're all still part and parcel of our lives. But also, there's joy, there's loyalty, there's truth and love. And these are the things we want to celebrate. By the end of each psalm, uh, the writer gives God's answer and God's perspective on the particular situation. You know, you read through and, and some of them are pretty uh, tough reading. You think, oh, goodness me, oh, yeah, you know. And then... If it's not expressed through the psalm, by the end he said, but God, and then he gives God's answer to that, to that particular problem. And that lifts me into a new place, lifts me into more, uh, into encouragement, um, a new life of heart and spirit. And it's true, the Lord really does have the answer for everything. But I found it's not always in the way we would have chosen. Oh no, I'm sure this would have been better. Um, inevitably it wouldn't have been, but that's the way perhaps I would have chosen. Um, or perhaps even in, he answers in a way it would never ever have occurred to me in a million years. You think, wow, you know, that is so God because he has got the answer um, in a way that I, I wouldn't have in all my wisdom. Um, yeah, he really does have the answer. And just lately, the evidence for this has been so clear. Things are happening, circumstances are coming together, people are coming together. They're getting together and people are hearing from God in ways that I wouldn't even have thought about. God is saying things that, wow, that person over there said that, and this person over here who doesn't even know them are saying the same things. Um, and that's just amazing, that is just so God. Um, even if things aren't laid out step by step by step, God does lead us step by step by step. We might not see, well we definitely don't see the end from the beginning, we might not even see anything beyond the first tentative step into something for our lives or, or for our church, but God is asking us to trust him to listen to him and go for it. Well, that can be the scary bit. Go for it um, when he shows us. We don't want to move without hearing from God. Um, we don't want to have a good idea, but we want to have God's idea. I mean, this all may sound a bit um, nebulous, a bit mysterious at the moment, but. Lord is in charge um, and all of us in LCC are listening and hearing and waiting and seeing just what God has got in store for us. Um, yeah, so coming on to Psalm 32, I'm going to read from verse 6 to the end. First I'm going to read in the NIV, then I'm going to read in the Passion, uh, Psalm 32, verse 6 to the end. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you, this is God speaking, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. 
Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds a man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. Right, I'm just going to read it again. Um, verse 6 to the end. Sorry about this, I think I've... Yeah, yeah, verse 6 to the end. <laughs> this is what I've learned through it all. All believers should confess their sins to God. Do it every time God has uncovered you in the time of exposing. That's always very good, isn't it? You know, straight away. Let's keep short accounts with God. For if you do this, when sudden storms of life overwhelm, you'll be kept safe. Lord, you are my secret hiding place, protecting me from these troubles, surrounding me with songs of gladness. Your joyous shouts of rescue release my breakthrough. I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing you and guiding you along the pathway for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn when I take you where you've not been before. Stubborn as a mule, you know. Don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. So my conclusion is this. Many are the sorrows and frustrations of those who don't come clean with God. But when you trust in the Lord for forgiveness, his wraparound love will surround you. So celebrate the goodness of God. He shows this kindness to everyone who is his. Who, who is his. Go ahead, shout for joy, all you upright ones who want to please him. So, verse 8 to 9. Don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn. Don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. Goodness me. Times when I can be as stubborn as a mule. And John will attest to that one. Um, but in these times, I've said that, in these times when the reset button has been pressed, when everything is different to how it's been before, we need to come along with him. I fully believe he's doing a new thing. And I personally am scared of going back to how it was, how things were before. And I'm more scared of going back than I am of going on into something new. So that is very scary as well. But if God is showing us something new, then it's got to be the right way. If God is showing us something different, if God is showing us, not if it's my good idea, but if God is showing us, then it's more scary to say, no, don't want to do it. Or, oh God, you've got to tug me and pull me along because I don't want to do it. It's like, yeah, okay, God, you know, let me follow you. God's promises is that he will stay close to us, instructing us and guiding us along the pathway for our lives. And this, yeah, this is for us as individuals. This is for us as our um, individual family. But it's also for us as a church family. Um, LCC, as we are um, at the moment, we are a particular expression of God's body on here, here on earth, of Christ's body here on earth. We are a particular expression. We will be different from other churches' expression, and they will be different from, from, from us. And that's fine. That is not wrong. God is a big, creative, multifaceted God, and so must his church be. So, one lot, one lot, sorry, one group of people will think, will, will, will hear God saying something for them, and... <laughs> One group of people will hear what God is saying to, to them, and it, it might be different. But so long as God is honoured and glorified and Jesus is there in his place as our Saviour and Lord, then it can't be wrong, can it? Because as long as Jesus is at the centre, Jesus is at the centre, then we are... Um, or just a different expression of what he is trying to show to the world. I'm going a bit off tangent here, but I believe, well, this isn't off tangent, I believe, I know, we all know, don't we, that Jesus is at the centre of our church. And that's, that's it. And he is guiding and instructing us. I mean, as Paul said, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? 
and we cannot all be the same. The only person we must be listening to is God himself. To reiterate, he promised to stay close to us, instruct us and guide us. If we live in his forgiveness and we trust in his forgiveness, then his wraparound love will surround us. Um, also, obviously, sharing with each other. I shared with a dear friend this week, Malachi 3, verse 16, which I shall read out here. <clears throat> Malachi 3, verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honoured honored his name. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. I will spare them, just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. This is all part and parcel of working out what God is saying, God's instructing and guiding. It's as we talk together too, we tease out what God is saying um, in relationship with each other as well as in relationship with God. We sort of discuss things and tease and oh yes, yeah, and God is listening and he hears and he is so pleased when his people talk together and put him at the centre and yeah, what is God saying? What is And we pray together, we share things together. Um, he can speak to us through each other's wise words and each other's insight. Not one of us has got the whole answer for what is God, for what God is saying in a particular time we need each other we need each other's insight because we're not an island um when i was writing this i was reminded of simon and garth uncle song um i am a rock um some of you will be way too young to remember it but it is quite famous but anyway i'm just going to read out first verse well i think it's the second verse but one verse anyway and it is i've built walls a fortress deep and mighty that none may penetrate. I have no need of friendship. Friendship causes pain. It's laughter and loving I disdain. I am a rock. I am an island. Whew. This is not what God has for any of us. You know, we can all understand his words. God, I'm losing my notes now. We can all understand his words. Perhaps we've all been there and thought, oh, we just want to be on our own. It's less painful that way. Walls and barriers can be built up through hurt, betrayal and pain. And we've all felt that. But God can bring them down. And he will bring them down if we're willing to let them go. And to trust him. And learn to trust each other. Psalm 32 again. Verse 8 to the end. I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you instructing and guiding you along the pathway for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. That's good, isn't it? That's God's eyes as our guide. So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn. When I take you where you've not been before, mm, this is where we've all not been before. Ah, don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. So my conclusion is this, many are the sorrows and frustrations of those who don't come clean with God. But when you trust in the Lord for forgiveness, his wraparound love will surround you. So celebrate the goodness of God. He shows his kindness to everyone who is, it, who is his. Go ahead, shout for joy, all you upright ones who want to please him. So... I see us as the upright ones who want to please him. So let's shout, let's celebrate, let's come clean with God, celebrate his kindness, shout for joy, see what he has for us in these new times. It may be different from what we've had before. Some aspects of it may be the same. We don't know yet. This is all part of teasing out what God has for us. Um, but yeah, it may be different from what we've had before. I'm certain it will be different from what we've had before in some aspects and it may be different from what other churches have but whatever he has for us he is our hiding place and protection from Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30 this is Jesus speaking 
Are you weary carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me, for all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. So we just need to trust that Jesus' words, obviously, they're so true. Everything he has will be pleasant and easy to bear. So, Father God, as we, we place our hand in yours, we trust in you, we walk with you, listening to you, just be our guide and help us to celebrate your kindness and goodness and your wraparound love to each and every one of us. Yeah, thank you, Lord, that we're not an island on our own. We have you and we have your people. Yeah, just thank you, Father, for all your goodness and love. Amen. Well, hope to see you soon one way or another and uh, love you all. Bye.